Hello and welcome back for the next part of story time. I really hope you're still enjoying listening to me and Miss Beast will read to you. I'm doing it in my garden today, seeing as it's so lovely out. So let's get going. Harry got through the next three days by forcing himself to think about his handbook of do-it-yourself broom care whenever Aunt March started on him. This worked quite well though it seemed to give him a glazed look because Aunt Marge started voicing the opinion that he was mentally subnormal. At last, at long last, the final evening of Marge's stay arrived. Aunt Petunia cooked a fancy dinner and Uncle Vernon and corked several bottles of wine. They got all the way through the soup and the salmon without a single mention of Harry's faults. During the lemon meringue pie, Uncle Vernon bored them all with a long talk about Grunnings, his drill making company. Then Aunt Petunia made coffee and Uncle Vernon brought out a bottle of brandy. Go tempt you, Marge. Aunt Marge had already had rather a lot of wine and her huge face was very red. Just a small one then, she chuckled. A bit more than that. A bit more. That's the boy. Dudley was eating his fourth slice of pie. Aunt Petunia sipping coffee with her little finger sitting, her little finger sticking out. Harry really wanted to disappear into his bedroom. But he met Uncle Vernon's angry little eyes and he knew he would have to sit it out. Ah, said Aunt Marge, smacking her lips together and putting the empty brandy glass down. Excellent not, Petunia. It's normally a, just a fry-up for me of an evening with twelve dogs to look after. She burped richly and patted her great tweed stomach. Pardon me. But I do like to see a healthy-sized boy, she went on, winking at Dudley. You'll be a proper-sized man, Dudders, like your father. Yes. I'll have a spot more brandy, Vernon. Now this one here, she jerked her head at Harry, who felt his stomach clench. The handbook, he thought quickly. This one's got a mean, runty look about him. You get that with dogs. I had Colonel Fubster drown one last year. Ratty little thing it was. Weak, underbred. Harry was trying to remember page 12 of his book. A charm to cure reluctant reverses. It all comes down to blood. And as I was saying the other day, Bad blood will out. Now, I'm saying nothing against your family, Petunia. She patted Aunt Petunia's bony hand with her shovel-like one. But your sister was a bad egg. They turn up in the best families. And then she ran off with that wastrel, and here's the result right in front of us. Harry was staring at his plate. A funny ringing in his ears. Grasp your broom firmly by the tail, he thought. But he couldn't remember what came next. Aunt Marge's voice seemed to be boring into him like one of Uncle Vernon's drills. This potter, said Aunt Marge loudly, seizing the brandy bottle and splashing more into her glass over the, and over the tablecloth. You never told me what he did. Uncle Vernon and Aunt Petunia were looking extremely tense. Dudley had even looked up from his pie to gape at his parents. He didn't work, said Uncle Vernon, with half a glance at Harry, unemployed. As I expected said Aunt Marge, taking a huge swig of brandy and wiping her chin on her sleeve. A no account, good for nothing, lazy grounder who... He was not, Harry said suddenly. The table went very quiet. Harry was shaking all over. He had never felt so angry in his life. More brandy, yelled Uncle Vernon, who had gone very white. He emptied the bottle into Aunt Marge's glass. You boy, he snarled at Harry. Go to bed, go on. No, Vernon, he coughed Aunt Marge, holding up a hand and her tiny bloodshot eyes fixed on Harry's. Go on, boy. Proud of your parents, are you? They got themselves killed in a car crash. Drunk, I expect. They didn't die in a car crash, said Harry, who found himself on his feet. They died in a car crash, you nasty little liar, and left you to be a burden on their decent, hard-working relatives screamed Aunt Marge, swelling with fury. You are an incident and grateful little... But Aunt Marge suddenly stopped speaking. For a moment, it looked as though words had failed her. She seemed to be swelling with an impressive anger. But the swelling didn't stop. Her great face started to expand. Her tiny eyes bulged and her mouth stretched too tightly for speech. Next second, several bottles... But Several buttons burst from her tweed jacket and pinged off the walls. She was inflating like a monstrous balloon, her stomach bursting free of her tweed waistband, each of her fingers blowing up like a salami. 
Marge! yelled Uncle Vernon and Aunt Petunia together as Aunt Marge's whole body began to rise off her chair towards the ceiling. She was entirely round now, like a vast life boy, with piggy eyes, and her hands and her feet stuck out weirdly as she drifted up into the air, making apologetic, apologetic popping noises. Ripper, Ripper came skidding into the room, barking madly. No! Uncle Vernon seized one of Marge's feet and tried to pull her down again, but was almost lifted off the floor himself. Next second, Ripper had leapt forward and sunk his teeth into Uncle Vernon's leg. Harry tore from the dining room before anyone could stop him, heading for the cupboard under the stairs. The cupboard door burst magically open as he reached it. In seconds, he had heaved his trunk to the front door. He sprinted upstairs, threw himself under the bed, wrenched up the loose foreboard and grabbed the pillowcase full of his books and birthday presents. He wriggled out, seized Hegridge's empty cage and dashed back downstairs to his trunk, just as Uncle Vernon burst out of the dining room and came his trouser leg in bloody tatters. Come back in here, he bellowed. Come back and put her right. But a reckless rage had come over Harry. He kicked his trunk open, pulled out his wand and pointed it at Uncle Vernon. She deserved it. Harry said, breathing very fast. She deserved what she got. You keep away from me. He fumbled behind him for the catch on the door. I'm going, Harry said. I've had enough. And the next moment, he was out in the dark, quiet street, heaving his heavy trunk behind him, Hegwidge caged under his arm. And that is the end of the chapter. So next time, Miss Beastle will start reading you chapter three, The Night Bus. I'm very excited for that chapter. It's one of my favourites. I hope you're all staying safe and enjoying the sun and I'll see you again soon.